Hi everybody. I thought I'd work on a journal page and I figured I might as well turn on my camera. I haven't done very many videos lately. So here we go. Um, I am trying out digital stamps for the first time. Um, I have been watching um, Lindsay from the Frugal Crafter. Very entertaining. Um, has lots of good info. Watch the Ask a Crafter videos. They're amazing. Um, but I went to her blog and I looked at some of her digital stamps and I ended up buying a couple. They were on sale um, for 50% off. So I have this in another file that I paid $3.25 for. Um, this is not all the flowers are on there, but this bud and this flower are one piece. This flower is one piece. This flower is one piece. And these three buds are another piece. And there's one or two other images in there. Um, and I paid a dollar seventy five maybe for this file and it comes as a PNG which if you open it in Photoshop and I'm not sure what other programs um, it comes in with a transparent background so all you have is the line work so you can overlap them and um, and you don't have the white border around each piece they also come as a JPEG where you can just print out one and it has you, know, you can open that in anything word um, whatever and uh, it will print out, but it will have a background. It will not be just the outline. So, I mean, it will just be, it will have a, a white background when you pull it in. So anything you put it over, you know, it's going to um, show. So I pulled these into um, Photoshop and arranged them. I opened each one of the files that was the PNG, and I opened a new file in Photoshop, and I pulled these into my new file. And um, because they have the transparent background, you can layer them however you want and then I just went in with my eraser tool and just took out like the lines from this flower and from this stem um, and then printed it out this is my trial printout and I am really tickled it's really good um, you can kind of see here let me see if I can get it closer for you can actually see um, where I put water on it it did bleed a teeny bit it would kind of give you more of a vintagey look that was quite a bit of water too and that's out of my um, HP inkjet printer so and I, I I use my heat gun I always want to call it a glue gun I use my heat gun to dry it and um, that's all that it bled just a teeny little bit um, but I didn't want even that much because I wanted my colors to stay really true so I gave um, a squirt just a light quick layer of Krylon matte finish um, it's a Fixative. It's a permanent protective matte finish, but it's kind of a workable fixative when you have it on that thin. Um, so then I went with the water over here, and there's virtually no movement whatsoever. Um, and this is this was my practice thing to see how it would print out and where the borders would be, because this is what I wanted to print it on. It's a page out of my art journal. So I printed this out, and I kind of held them up and looked at the light through where it would shine you know up through and lined it up where I wanted it and stuck it in the printer that way and ran it through and um, it did go through the printer a little funky but it worked out pretty well um, I got what I wanted so um, but you can see here the stems didn't extend all the way down because they're different pieces so you know I had to add in the stem here that goes to this flower and lengthen some of the stems because it went through funny my stems ended like clear up here so I just extended those um, using a pit pen it's waterproof when it dries and um, then I sprayed the page with that same spray um, just to give it a little less you know just a little extra protection against going everywhere so if you haven't checked out um, digital stamps yet check them out and go to um, Lindy's stamp stuff dot wordpress dot com. Oh gosh, now I'll have to think about it and put the link. I can't remember for sure. Um, but I will try to remember to put a link in the description box for that. Um, but she has lots of cool stuff and she doesn't have just digital stamps. She's got um, um, SVG files for cutting and stuff and she has like a little package that you can like print and cut like different stuff for a party or you know stuff like that she's also got some tutorials and they're very reasonably priced very reasonably um, so if you want a tutorial on how to paint I think there's one that's like a sweet pea and 
you know, different ones. And um, she kind of goes more into depth in those than she does on the little YouTube blurps um, where it's only 20 minutes. So check those out too, um, especially if you're wanting to learn some watercolor painting and stuff like that. Um, it's a great place to go. I will put links to her blog and um, on her blog you can find the link to go to the store to see her stuff. It's a different site. Um, so I'll put that in there. So today my idea actually started out with the word bloom and I wanted to have it really big along the side right here and then have something else that I'm doing with the flowers that would kind of go behind and I thought about cutting out my words and putting them on here so they would block out the poppies actually and I'm going to use this stencil. I'll turn this over so you can see against there. So it's really big letters and they're a little bit funky but they're still really cool. So I want to use um, the bloom. I want to put bloom with this and I think I'm going to actually go ahead and paint the background except I'll put the letters in and then paint the background except where the letters are and then I think I'm going to go inside the letters. I'll just trace them in black or a color. I don't know what color yet but probably black and then go in after I'm done with the background and paint in in lighter tones the letters. So I already kind of spread them out on here. I traced where my image is because it's not quite straight so it kind of goes like that. So I can figure out how far apart my letters are going to be. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put these on here. And I think I'm going to start from the outside and go in. So I'm going to move my palette right up there, precariously perched on my paper towels. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and put those in in pencil. I am not going to trace them in pen yet. So that I still have a little bit of leeway if I decide at some point that I want to do something different. I can always erase them or cut out letters to put on there if I want to. And I want them close to the edge. <coughs> Sorry, I'm a little bit dry here. Ah, much better. All right. I kind of want them to go all the way up the page. And then this I can just put over here and line up. These are the two middle letters so they're the little centers of the B and the M is ginormous so you can't just you know start in the middle of the word and work both ways because the M is really gargantuan and takes up more space than the other letters do so I have had these I've had this stencil set um, it's got like three sheets because it has all the uppercase, all the lowercase, and some numbers. And I really love it. I've had it for a long time and I really love it. Okay. Can I get that lined up a little bit? Okay. is just about perfect right there. Yay! Okay, here's the centers. And I'm going to put these up just a little bit because I like that. Okay. So now when I paint my background, I know where my letters are and I am going to not paint inside the letters. Um, I'm going to paint those in last, I think. Okay. I am going to use watercolors. This is my palette. It needs cleaned, but um, I'm just going to wipe it out with a paper towel quickly <laughs> so that I have some clean places to mix. And I should have done that before I started, but I really didn't really have a big plan when I started. So I'm just going to kind of wipe that up really quick. And that's the beauty of watercolors. They rehydrate like instantly, so I can just take a damp paper towel and just wipe out all of my mixing wells and go again. 
I love watercolors. I love how versatile they are and how easy cleanup they are. If you forget paint in your watercolor brush, it's not the end of the world. If you forget acrylic in there, it is the end of your brush. Um, okay, so I am going to use these two brushes. I just got them. This one is a Princeton Neptune. Oh, this one is as well. This is a size 10 round. This is a size 12 round. And I chose to pick these up. I have lots of other brushes, but they come to such a fine point. Let's see if I can get it against something you can see right there. They come to a super fine point, even how big they are. And um, you can make teeny tiny little lines or great big wash areas. And I love them. This is the first kind I've had like this. I usually have um, like your standard... Uh, Synthetic brushes, I'm, those are probably synthetic too, but I'm thinking kind of like, you know, these kind of brushes. And these ones are, you know, they are a little bit like that, but I, they don't hold as much water. I don't know what the difference is, but these, if you put them in water and pick it up like this, it will hold a ton of water. I mean, just a ton of water. So you can really get a whole background. Um, so what I'm going to do... I um, wonder if I should mask those letters off. might be easier. Okay. Um, yeah. I am going to... How do I want to mask those off? Oh, I guess I'm not going to because I do not have a quick, easy way to do it and I'm not going to spend all day trying to mask them. I don't have any masking fluid right now, or if I do, it's in my guest room, which my son is living in at the moment, and buried um, behind his stuff. So I am just going to kind of put in the background first because I want it to be, um, I want to have a blue background with uh, maybe some spots kind of, of color. So I'm just going to kind of wet a big chunk of it here so I can kind of drop some color in there. And I mean, see, you can, it just, you can touch just barely the end of it, or you can use the side to where it just spreads out. You know, you can really put some color or water down to wet your paper, or whatever. Okay, I'm going to use a little bit of cerulean and a hint of phthalo blue because I just kind of want that cooler kind of blue and then I'm just gonna put that kind of in the background here and it's just going to be kind of modeled and just kind of thrown in there and this is going to actually dry lighter than what it looks on here so I know I'm going to have a fairly pale background. Mix up some more. And I don't want it to be too bright because I don't want it to conflict too much with the poppies. So. And because it's wet, and the paper's already wet, which it is not acting quite like it normally does because I did use a layer of that spray, and it was a fine layer, but it does kind of act as like a little bit of a resist on top of there. Um, and I hadn't really counted on that. So this is going to be um, a little bit different. We'll just see how it goes. This could be kind of interesting. I have not used that spray um, and tried to do a watercolor wash over it before. So you get to learn with me. Learn my mistakes and then don't do it. I suppose you could even um, print it out on a regular piece of paper and kind of trace where they're going to be. You could put in the background first or, you know, whatever. But we're just kind of going on a little adventure here. I 
I seem to do that. I seem to think, oh, I'll try this new, I'll try that new, and then here I am having to figure out all my mistakes. But half the time I don't do it again so that I, you know, do something different than my mistake. I go try something all new and make new mistakes, and that's okay. It's okay with me. Somewhere down the road, I'll generally come back and do something, you know, similar again. And we'll remember, don't do that. <laughs> Try this instead. And I'm going to put in a little bit of green. I don't remember which green this is. I want to say maybe hooker's green deep. Yeah, see, it's really beating up on there. It's going to give it an interesting texture. I'm going to add a little bit of green gold. Green gold, I have to tell you, is my all-time favorite, favorite color. I love that color. It's a, It comes out as kind of a light green, but it blends into kind of a yellow green. Kind of a interesting color. See, I'll put some on there. See, it's just, oh, I love that color. And it adds a nice little bit put in here for, you know. And my camera ran out of space. I don't have very much space on my camera. I was I used my husband's on my last video, but the stupid autofocus you can't turn off, and so it kept doing this little thing like that every time I moved, you know, and stopped. It would refocus. Um, drove me mad, and I'm sure everybody else out there is not exactly sane after watching that. So I'm using my phone. Not as good a resolution, but it doesn't do the autofocus thing. So we're back with that. And we'll go from there. I'm going to wet this down again in here and put some greens in that I had going on here. And let me see. In my drawer up here, I have my watch sheet. I can tell you what color green I'm using because I don't remember right off the top of my head. Uh, it is Hooker's Green and um, Green Gold. I have this wonderful swatch. Uh, it matches up with my palette so these are there and, and the brown ones and oranges and reds are up here. And I also, I wrote the name on there, I wrote the um, brand, what series, and um, the light fastness, and I marked some of them with whether they're opaque or staining, um, so that when I go to use one, if I want to do something in particular, and I have a heads up of what's going on in there. So I'm going to add some more of this green gold in here. Go back in here. I'm just going to add a little bit more of those darks in here. Alrighty. I want to use a pretty red and I am going to use Napthal. It is a nice bright red and I'm going to add a little bit of water to that. Oh, I need to flush my water again because it's green in there now. Just gonna kind of go in with just a really light, it's almost a pink, but I kind of want to keep some of the some of it lighter, so that it's I can add the darks in. These will end up being basically the highlights. Kind of squinch into the M there and around it. And I think I'm going to go ahead, since I'm using such light ones, and just go ahead and put in the pink on there. And then sort of just dab it like that. And I think going in and adding this red first 
is um, kind of this lighter color is going to kind of help loosen up some of that uh, spray because I noticed down here um, having wet it once and gone over it really kind of changed how the water took to the paper and these are going to kind of have a mottled sort of look not what I had intended but I think it's going to be um, nice anyway and put some red in here and I'm going to go ahead and leave it just a tiny bit darker because those are the petals emerging and they don't they're not spread out as much so they are going to look a little darker that one doesn't really show there's another one and another plume kind of up in here I'm going to go ahead and put it in and then blot it up to the edge so it's faint. Okay. Now I'll get a little bit more red in my brush. And I'm going to kind of go around the highlights. Where it would be a little bit of, not the highlights, the low lights, where it's going to have a little bit more um, depth of color. And I'm going to go right over the black spot. And yes, I use my finger like an eraser sometimes. Kind of filling in a little bit more red. And I think I'm going to go ahead um, and fast forward to this next bit so you don't have to sit here and watch slowly how I do this. You'll be able to follow it um, as I go. So. Okay, I'm back. Um, I kind of finished doing the watercolor on the roses and I want to go over these letters and kind of see what I have. So I was just going to trace around them, but I think I'm actually going to use this to trace the lines so that they stay nice and neat because I kind of wanted to really contrast with the sketchiness of uh, the poppies. So I am using a regular plain old Sharpie. I was going to use the brush tip pit pen, but um, 
The line was just a little bit thin. I kind of wanted it to be a little bit more pronounced. So, Sharpie it is. And, let's see. Get my stencil lined up here. Oh, good grief. I may actually make these letters see how it looks. I may have to darken, make the lines just a little bit uh, heavier to really break that up well. Kind of got my stencil catching on my tripod there. Maybe one day when I get a little extra cash I'll get an actual video recorder, but at this point there's just not the bucks to do that, and it's not really an option. But someday, you just never know. It could come. I always have a hard time spending money on stuff I should anyway, so I'd rather spend money on art stuff than clothes or, you know, camera. or I always want to go to the art store and spend the money. You can't tell me you don't like to do the same. We all love the art store, right? Yeah, I think I am going to make those just a little bit bolder, and I'm going to have to do that freehand. So, I am just going to kind of go right inside and just trace right along the edge, and that is going to give me a bolder line, it looks like. That should be good. So, I just have to move my paper all around here. It's a lot harder to follow the lines if you don't turn your paper, I see. At least for me. If I keep turning my paper, I have just the right angle to work with and then I have better luck. There we go. Nice bold black lines to break that up. I may have to darken those greens just a little bit to get, you know, some more contrast here. But I'm going to finish tracing this and then I will be right back.